Welcome, friends. In this first part, we will witness the most intimate moment, the beginning of new life. This is the story of how two cells, a sperm and an egg, come together to create a human being. It all begins with ovulation, the release of a mature egg from the ovary into the fallopian tube. At this moment, the female body is ready for fertilization. At the same time, during intercourse, millions of sperm enter the vagina and begin their complex journey toward the egg. Only a few hundred reach the fallopian tube, and only one lucky sperm manages to fertilize it. A sperm cannot simply break into the egg. On its head is a special structure, the acrosome, which contains enzymes capable of dissolving the protective layers of the egg. This process is called the acrosomal reaction. After one sperm reaches the zona zona pellucida of the egg and penetrates it, a true miracle occurs, a block is triggered to prevent any other sperm from entering. The door is now closed. And then. The moment of fertilization, the nucleus of the sperm and the nucleus of the egg merge, combining 23 chromosomes from the father and 23 from the mother. Together, 46 chromosomes, which determine everything, gender, eye color, blood type, height, even potential talents. This is not just a cell, it is a zygote. It already holds all the genetic information needed to create a unique human being. And although it's still tiny, less than 0.1 millimeters in diameter, it is from this cell that the most complex and magnificent process in nature begins. After fertilization, the zygote begins its journey through the fallopian tube toward the uterus. Over the next few days, it doesn't grow in size but starts dividing rapidly, and this marks the transition to the next stage, cleavage. Next, we will see how a single cell becomes dozens, then hundreds, how they organize, interact, and prepare to form a full-fledged embryo. Stay with us. Up next, cleavage, cells multiply where we'll reveal the astonishing mechanism by which a single-celled zygote transforms into a multicellular organism. See you in the next part. Next, we will dive into the fascinating process of cleavage, the first major wave of cell division that leads to the formation of a multicellular embryo. Just a few hours ago, we were observing a zygote, a single cell that had just emerged as a result of the fusion between the egg and the sperm. Now, this tiny organism is beginning to change rapidly. Cleavage is a series of rapid cell divisions that occur without an increase in the total size of the embryo. In other words, the zygote doesn't grow in size, but rather divides into smaller and smaller cells, called blastomeres. This process continues for several days as the embryo travels through the fallopian tube toward the uterus. The first division typically occurs 24 to 30 hours after fertilization. The zygote splits into two cells, which then become four, then eight, and so on. By the 1632 cell stage, a compact cluster forms, known as the morula. Externally, it resembles a blackberry. A solid ball of tightly packed cells, without any cavity. Interestingly, during these early days, all blastomeres remain unspecialized. They are totipotent, meaning they each have the potential to develop into any type of cell in the body, or even into an entirely new organism, as in the case of identical twins. However, very soon, the cells begin to communicate with one another, exchanging signals, and this dialogue gradually initiates the process of specialization. Around the fifth day after fertilization, the morula transforms into a blastula, or more precisely in humans, a blastocyst. This marks a crucial turning point. For the first time, the cells form a cavity, the blastocele. Within the blastocyst, two key structures can now be distinguished, the inner cell mass, which will become the embryo, and the trophoblast, which will later develop into part of the placenta. At this stage, the embryo is ready for implantation, the attachment to the uterine wall. This is a vital step without which further development cannot occur. If all goes well, the blastocyst enters the uterine cavity, attaches to the endometrium, and begins to embed itself into the lining. This is the beginning of the true connection between the future organism and the mother's body. The process of cleavage doesn't just increase the number of cells, 
it lays the foundation for the embryo's complex organization. Even at this early stage, the internal, developmental program is being activated, preparing the embryo for the next crucial phase, the formation of the germ layers. And that's exactly what we'll explore next. In the upcoming part, we'll focus on the blastula, the first architectural transformation of the embryo. We'll witness how a seemingly chaotic cluster of cells begins to form a structured layout, from which an entire human body will eventually emerge. Next, we will immerse ourselves in a process that can truly be called the first architectural planning of the human body. After the cleavage stage, when the embryo consisted of a ball of identical cells, comes the next phase, the blastula. In humans, this stage takes on a specific form known as the blastocyst. Around the fifth or sixth day after fertilization, while cleavage is still ongoing, the first internal cavity, the blastocele, forms within the dense cluster of cells. This marks the transition from morula to blastocyst. And although the embryo is still very small, its internal structure is already remarkably complex. At this stage, cells begin to differentiate for the first time. Two main components emerge. The inner cell mass, embryoblast, which will become the future embryo. The outer layer, trophoblast, which will give rise to part of the placenta, providing the embryo with nutrients and oxygen. Thus, the embryo is no longer just a ball of cells. It is an organized structure with clearly defined functional zones. This is the first step toward morphogenesis, the process by which tissues and organs begin to form in the right place at the right time. On day 6-7, to seven, the blastocyst reaches the uterine cavity, where implantation occurs, the attachment to the endometrium, the inner lining of the uterus. This is a critical milestone. If the embryo cannot successfully implant, further development becomes impossible. Implantation is not just a mechanical sticking process. Trophoblast cells actively invade the uterine tissue, forming the first zone of contact between the embryo and the mother's body. At this point, signals begin to form that suppress the woman's immune response, since from the immune system's perspective, the embryo is a foreign presence. In this way, the mother's body begins to accept the new life. After implantation, the cells of the inner cell mass undergo deeper transformation. The stage is gradually being set for gastrulation, the event during which the embryoblast forms the three germ layers from which all tissues and organs will develop. It is during this time that key genes begin to activate, laying out the body's axes, front, back, left, right, top, bottom. From what once appeared to be a chaotic cluster of cells, an ordered, logical blueprint of the human body begins to emerge. A crucial role in this process is played by epigenetics, mechanisms that control the activation and deactivation of genes without altering the underlying DNA sequence. This allows cells with the same genetic code to acquire very different functions, some will become neurons, others muscle cells, and still others part of the placenta. So, the blastula stage is truly a moment of architectural design. There are no tissues or organs yet, but the blueprint is there. There are landmarks. There are initial specializations. The next step will be gastrulation. The process by which this plan begins to take form in physical reality. N. Now we move on to a pivotal moment, the true beginning of the formation of the human body. The gastrulation stage is not just another step, it is a true revolution inside the embryo. If until now we were dealing with a simple ball or disc of cells, this is when structure, orientation, and depth begin to emerge. Gastrulation typically begins in the third week after fertilization. At this point, the embryo, which previously had a two-layered structure, transforms into a three-layered one. These three germ layers will each give rise to different tissues and organ systems. Ectoderm, the outer layer, which will develop into the skin, hair, tooth enamel, and the nervous system, including the brain and spinal cord. Mesoderm, the middle layer, which will give rise to muscles, bones, the heart, blood vessels, kidneys, and other internal organs. Endoderm, the inner layer, from which the digestive system, lungs, liver, and pancreas will develop. 
This process unfolds through a complex and precisely coordinated migration of cells. A structure called the primitive streak appears on the surface of the embryonic disc, a temporary feature through which cells begin to dive inward and spread out, forming the new layers. This streak defines the body axis, where the head and tail will be, the back and the front. Within a few days, another key structure forms, the node, primitive knot. It regulates cell movement and determines many fundamental aspects of the organism, left, right asymmetry, axis orientation, and body shape. Interestingly, during gastrulation, cells not only change position, they begin to acquire specific fates. This means that even at this early stage, it becomes increasingly possible to predict which part of the embryo will become the brain, and which will become the intestines. However, the cells still retain a certain plasticity, under the right conditions, some can still switch careers. Gastrulation marks the critical turning point after which embryonic development follows a precise, programmed path. It is such a complex and essential phase that serious errors at this stage often lead to developmental failure. In parallel with layer formation, the first rudiments of future organs begin to emerge, a process known as organogenesis. Soon after gastrulation, the neural tube, the precursor of the spinal cord, the heart, the primitive gut, and other major systems will begin to form. So, gastrulation is a true threshold. From a shapeless cluster of cells, the embryo transforms into an organism with structure, orientation, and developmental potential. This stage can be seen as the architectural realization of the previously laid blueprint. This concludes our journey through the early stages of embryonic development. We have traveled together from fertilization, through cleavage, blastula, and gastrulation, all the way to the point where the future organism begins to take shape. Ahead lie new, even more complex and fascinating stage.